Documenting your artwork with a digital camera allows you to keep a record of your completed and sold artwork. Whether you gift it to somebody or you sell it, you want to make sure that it's a part of your legacy as an artist. Documenting your artwork is also important because you can utilize the digital record as a tool to produce additional income for your art practice. There is a standard model for setting up a space for art documentation. All you need to start is a tripod, a digital SLR camera, and a beginner's lighting kit. If you don't own these, you can rent the equipment needed from most camera stores. If you know where you'll be mounting the artwork for the photo, the first thing you can do is set up the lights. The way you light will depend on the medium used in the artwork. The most important aspect is to get an even distribution of light. Today I'm using strobe lights which are timed to flash when the picture is taken. Strobe lights are used by professionals because you have the ability to adjust how bright the light is when it flashes. An entry level alternative would be to use a daylight lamp or any lighting gear that can use a daylight bulb. Instead of a flash of light, these provide constant light on your subject. Your setup is always going to be the same in the space where you're photographing your artwork, regardless of whether you decide to use a strobe lighting kit or a daylight lamp. The most important thing about whichever kind of lighting equipment you use is that it has a true white daylight. You can't use incandescent or fluorescent light because the light they produce is too yellow or green. It's really important to make sure that you are reducing as much non-white light from the space where you are photographing so that you don't have a mixed lighting scenario. You generally want to make sure that the room is as dark as possible when you're working. Now you can set up your camera onto the tripod. If you are not familiar with digital cameras, read the manual that comes with your rental or ask a sales staff at the camera store for help. These manuals are actually very straightforward and a really great resource when you're first learning how to use a camera. Really when it comes down to it, a good quality camera and lens are the key to achieving the best results. Today I'm using an easel to mount my artwork onto a white piece of foam core. Together they are great as a mount because they allow me to place the artwork upright and completely vertical. I use push pins to secure the artwork, but I don't puncture the picture with them, I just use them as a guide to rest and secure the artwork. If you are doing this from home and are in a room where you are able to mount your artwork directly onto a wall that is white, this is a preferable setup. Now I can take a few test photos and adjust the position of my camera so the lens is parallel to the artwork. You want the edges of the artwork to appear as right angles in the viewfinder. The four key things you need to remember with your camera is that your image quality is set to RAW. These are the largest photos that your camera can produce. You want to make sure that your aperture and shutter speed are set appropriately to capture the image. Your ISO is set low. And you also want to make sure that your white balance is set up correctly. If you're new to using an SLR camera, you can use auto white balance. Again, four basic things that can easily be learned from a manual or online. Because the flash is so strong when the light is directly facing the artwork, depending on the room that you are in, you may need to turn the lights a different direction in order to bounce the light off of a different surface, such as a wall or a piece of foam core that you've mounted. Bouncing the light essentially enables the light to travel much further. When it reaches the artwork, it's now more ambient than it would have been if the light was directly facing the artwork. I'm happy with this photo as it looks like there is even light. When I use the zoom function on my camera, I can see that all the small details are in focus. This is key when it comes time to print my image. The next step is taking the picture into photo editing software to prepare it for printing. Be sure to watch part two where I show you some simple editing tips and an overview of the different types of surfaces available for printing. I'm Andrea Walker-Collins from Opus Art Supplies, and I'll see you in part two of documenting your artwork with a digital camera.